Hello, welcome to the next video in the series on techniques used in medieval Islamic bookbinding. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to measure, cut, and glue the coverboard material to your book block. Before we get into the process, I want to talk a little bit about the material. In the medieval period, they would have used what's called pasteboard, which is basically layers of paper with glue applied, stacked together, pressed down to form a board. Um, there are that I know of, there are two easily, fairly easily obtainable modern equivalents. One of them is called binder's board. That's what this stuff is. Um, it's primarily used in modern day book binding, so if you want to use it, you have to either acquire it from the internet or from a specialty store. Um, it works great though. Uh, something that's a little more readily available and works well for smaller books is matte board, like you'd find in the art store for matting pictures or fine artwork or whatever comes in different colors sometimes in different thicknesses, um, but basically these are both paste boards just made using modern materials and methods. So they're the closest modern equivalents that I know of. Um, for the small books that I've been making in the tutorials, I generally use the matte board, but white on white makes it a little bit more difficult to see in the video, so I'm going to demonstrate today on a larger book that I've been working on that I'm using binders board for. I've already cut out one of the covers, so you can see, well, you can see with the background, that's how it's going to fit. So the covers themselves are made to be the exact same size as the book block, um, as opposed to modern books and some European traditions where the cover boards actually overlap the book block just a little bit, extend beyond it to help protect it. Uh, the Islamic bookbinding structures use something a little differently. Um, which is the foredge and envelope flap, which we'll get into in another video. Um, so they they measure the cover boards to the same size as the book block. So before we get to measuring the cover board, I find it helpful to uh, trim off these little ends of the spine lining. If you'll remember, we left it a little bit taller than the book block to help with the and help hold the end band core in place while we sewed it. But now those aren't optimal. Um, and I can show you kind of why. So when we glue the cover board, they're going to be sticking up. And when we go to fold the material over for the cover, which we'll get to in a later video, um, this cover board or this spine lining will add a little bit of extra bulk and have a slight bump. It's not the worst thing in the world, but if we can get rid of it easily, why shouldn't we? So we're going to do that first. So just with scissors or whatever, trim off a little bit off the top. Um, the goal is to get it basically just below the top edge, um, or ideally you would line it up perfectly with the top edge of the book block. I generally cut it just a tiny bit below, um, you can't really see that, but I cut it just a tiny bit below because it, that way it, I make sure it, it stays out of the way when I'm folding over the, the cover material later. So. Cutting all of the little edges off. And that just helps make a slightly more professional looking book, which is, you know, nice. Books are primarily functional, but in the Islamic tradition they're secondarily decorative, and so we want them to be pretty. Alright, so I cleaned it up. Now is also a great time if you've got ragged edges on the spine lining, you can clean those up too. These look pretty good, so I'm going to leave them. So to measure and cut the board, I like to line it up with a nice 90 degree corner over here. Um, that can either be from the original 90 degree corner of the book board, or um, if from the last time you cut, just make sure it's still 90 and line it up. So I'm I'm lining up the spine along the edge, I'm lining up the bottom along the edge, and then I'm going to mark the other two edges with where I need to cut. Um, you do it with a pencil, you can do that with an X-Acto knife, just don't cut too deep. I actually found that the awl, my awl works really well for this, especially on binders board. On mat board, I usually just use a pencil. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the edge of the paper. I'm going to lightly trace along the binder's board to leave a slight groove. Like that. 
And I'm going to do the same thing up top. And then I doubt you can see this all that well, but where there's a slight lighter line here, that's the groove I made. Uh, I don't think you can see the top at all in the video, but trust me, it's there too. Um, so the thing to, to deal to know when dealing with pasteboard is um, you want to cut it with a sharp blade like an X-Acto knife, and you want to do it in multiple light passes. So rather than trying to cut all the way through all at once the first try, you want to do it lightly, going over the same line several times. This helps make a straighter line and um, helps prevent like fibers from splitting and, and doing weird things. Side note, you can also cut thin wood like this, although it's kind of a, an annoyance, so I don't recommend it. And we keep tracing. Ah. And that would be why you do it lightly. Because that's suboptimal and would have been much, much worse if I had gone through more than just a layer of the pasteboard. You don't need to sit here and, and watch me do this the whole time. So another way that you can do this if you don't want to just sit there and trace your book is you can measure your book first and then measure your binder's board. So in this case my book is five and a half by seven. Line up my seven on my bottom, line up my other one with my line, looks good. Make sure it's actually lined up places it's supposed to be lined up and look square. So I use a quilter square for this because then I can also check the squareness as well as doing the measurements. The downside is it tends to shift a little more easily than a, a cork back ruler. Okay, just double check. Make sure that I've got it in the right spot. And it's lined up correctly. And then I'm going to cut this board out. As well. But you guys don't need to watch. Alright, finished my second board. As you can see, the edges are a little bit rough. That happens. Um, if you want to smooth them out, a little bit of sandpaper will do the trick. Just lightly. Um, you don't want to tear away too much of the, the material while you're at it. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be hidden inside the cover anyway, but if you've got any like massive bumps where you didn't quite get it in a straight line, this is a way you can kind of shave them down a little bit um, and not have to go back in and cut it again. Okay. You know where station up? Alright. So now I have both cover boards. Just do a quick check that they both fit correctly. Looks good. Alright. Next we're going to glue it. So, I use my favorite weed starch glue. Um, this stuff that you turn into goop. It's great. Um, I also use parchment paper to help make sure that I only get the glue where I want the glue to go. And not, like to the pages of my book. And I'm just going to smear it on here. Okay. Um, I want to get a nice generous amount, especially because the linen is going to soak up some of it. Um, but I don't want to like totally saturated. So I generally glob on a bunch and then sort of smooth it out and take off some ex excess when I do that. And I'm also not trying to get it down the spine. 
currently. That's spine will get glued later when we attach the cover material itself. So there's the cover material, which is the outside. It's cloth or leather or paper or some combination thereof. And then there's the cover board material. Not to be confused, they're not the same thing, which is this. Um, the other thing that you need to do is pick a front and back. The way I do that is by looking at the end bands, and deciding which one's prettier. Um, yeah, we'll make this the front. Okay, so the front is going to need to have a little bit of extra space built in so that when you put the envelope flap in, the cover will still lay flat and not be kind of up on an angle. So the way I do that is I will take some of the excess scrap coverboard material, tuck it into a piece of parchment paper, put the parchment paper between the spine lining and the text block, and then take your cover board and sort of gently lay it on. Make sure that the edges line up with the edges of your book block. Um, if they're off, now is your chance to fix it. Once the glue dries, it becomes much, much harder. And then just like that. And then we flip it over. And quite honestly, it's easier if you do the back first, but that's okay. I decided partway through that I liked that one as the front better. So we do the back. Uh, and the reason, it's e the reason it's easier to do the back first is because then you don't have that extra bit of scrap material. You have to make sure it doesn't fall out. Cover the spine lining with glue. The reason I put a piece of parchment paper here is so that I don't accidentally get some glue onto the paper. I don't have to be super persnickety while I'm applying it. I can apply it kind of liberally without worrying about it. And then I take this one away and I put a clean piece in. And then I clean my the glue off with my fingers. I'm going to do the same thing for the back cover as I did for the front. Just going to kind of line it up, gently press it down, and then I'm going to open both covers gently and make sure that the spine lining has good adhesion to the boards. There's no like lumps or bubbles or anything. And then the parchment paper is tucked all the way in there. Flip it over, double check the front, make sure it didn't shift around much while I was uh, Doing the back, it looks like it shifted a little bit. So line it back up, press it back down, open it, check that the spine lining's good and adhered. And at this point, it goes in the press. And the press we're going to use is this one that we used earlier for the spine. And I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you this on camera, but we're going to try. So you're going to carefully take your book, you're going to put it, hold on, you're going to open it even wider to make it very easy to put the book inside. And you're going to put the book in your press. Um, I like to do it so that the spine is kind of almost on the other side touching the, uh, the mat board. So, what I'll do is I'll, I'll let it sit gently on the mat board, tighten it up most of the way, and then shift the whole thing up just a little bit. Um, one thing to watch out for while you're doing this is that your cover boards don't shift relative to the book block. So that's something you got to be careful of. Um, if they do, you can just loosen it, fix it, tighten it back up again. Um, once it dries, it's a lot harder to fix. So, like that, and then where you can't see it off screen, I'm tightening it down. And then we set our book aside. So, it's in the press, spines most of the way, 
towards the, the back end, but not all the way, just because I want to make sure that it's good and pressed down. And then we wait for the glue to dry. And then we'll do the next steps in the next video. I almost forgot to talk about what to do with the end band core material. So you have some options here. Uh, if you're using a thin end band core material, um, one of the one of the ways they did this in period was to just fold the end band material over and wedge it in between your spine lining and your cover board when you glue it down. So take the glue, carefully apply it to your spine lining. your unband core material, just fold it over like that, and then I put a little extra glue on top of that. And then you're going to take your cover board, place it on your text block, And then your cover, your end band core material will be wedged in between your spine lining and your cover board material. Um, the reason you only do this with thin leather is because otherwise it can make a bump here. But it works great if you're using scraps from bookbinding leather. And then you would tuck your piece of parchment paper in here and do the other side the same way. Um, the other option, which works well, or works better for thicker leathers, it's like I wouldn't want to, this one's kind of thick, I wouldn't really want to fold it in because it would form a, a lump when, when glued against my cover board. So your option there is you can trim it off. Um, so I'll take my scissors, and you want to make sure that you don't cut your secondary end band. So it's better to leave a little bit extra of the end band core material than it is to accidentally cut your secondary end band. Scissors will work if they can cut leather or an exacto knife works too. Just like that. I sometimes find it helpful to fold the spine lining out of the way while I'm working on this. Like that. Um, ideally, you want to try and cut it a little bit closer than I managed it, but again, it's better to leave a little extra than it is to um, cut your secondary end band. And then when you put your cover boards on, it'll just be just be over here. So, those are your options for your end band core material. Which one you do is up to you, and for me at least, usually depends on the thickness of the leather that I'm using for the end band core material. <laughs>